Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'll fill you in. I'm a gamer, and I love anything horror. So while you guys watch me game, I dive into all the true inspirations behind all of your favorite horror movies. So if you love gaming, and you love horror stuff, you've come to the right place. Let's get into it. Okay, so The Exorcist. We all love this horror movie. If you're into horror, I'm sure this has definitely come across your screen at some point. It's a classic. And to this day, even though this movie was made 20 plus years ago, it still gives me nightmares and it's still my top favorite horror movie. So the scariest part about this movie is the fact that it is based on true events. So there has been some series of situations that transpired into helping uh, create this terrifically horrific movie. So in the mid-1949, a number of newspapers reported an alleged possession and eventually exorcism of a boy named Ronald Edwin Hunkler. For a while, his name was not released, so he was known as Robbie or Roland Doe. So Ronald was born in 1935 and grew up in a Lutheran middle-class family in Cottage City, Maryland. And when he was 14 years old is when he started to hear the knocking and scratching sounds coming from his bedroom walls. Objects started to fly across the room and his bed somehow moved on its own. It is said that after expressing an interest in a Ouija board that his aunt Matilda Hendricks or Tilly gave him is when these incidents started. But also it is stated that apparently it was after the death of his aunt that the family started experiencing paranormal activity in the house, like vibrations, strange noises, flying objects, and even levitation. William Peter Blatty is the author of the novel The Exorcist, which was then turned into this movie. So Blatty describes this as the first stage of classical possession, also known as infestation and used this in his novel before the full possession of Reagan. The violence, the guttural voices, and revulsion of sacred items displayed by Reagan is also inspired by descriptions of, of all the incidents that Ronald um, had experienced during his possession. So the family turned to their Lutheran pastor, Miles Schultz, for help. Uh, Miles Schultz was interested in parapsychology for many, many years, so it took it upon himself to arrange for Ronald to spend the night in his home in order to observe his behavior. And after witnessing these events, Miles advised the family that Roland, sorry, Ronald, I'm so used to going back and forth between Robbie, Ro Roland, and Ronald, um, that Ronald should seek help from a Catholic priest. So after Ronald underwent a series of medical and psychological tests, which failed to find anything abnormal, his family sought out religious leaders, beginning with a Protestant pastor. William Bowden was among a small group of Jesuits who helped Ronald conducting more than 20 exorcisms on the teen over three months. And it was decided that Ronald should be taken to St. Louis to be treated for demonic possession which is where, coincidentally, his aunt Tilly had lived. On one evening, the word Lewis was written on the boy's ribs in deep red scratches, and then when discussing the length of time that he should be staying in St. Louis, three and a half weeks was printed on the boy's chest, and as to when they should leave, the word Saturday was printed on the boy's hip. So this is all being done in front of their eyes, nobody touching this poor little boy, but all of these words are just magically appearing on this boy's body. So on March 21st, 1949, Ronald entered the Alexian Brothers Hospital in St. Louis, where his behavior became way more violent, so much so that it actually broke a priest's nose. And by mid-April, Ronald claimed to be free of the devil after having visions of St. Michael's holding a flaming sword. So now we're going to fast forward about 70 years or so. Um, so Ronald ended up you know, growing up 
Uh, he actually was a NASA engineer who patented a special technology to make space shuttle panels resistant to extreme heat, helping the Apollo missions of the 1960s that put U.S. astronauts on the moon in 1969. So at this point, he had gone through everything he went through and has grown up, lived his life, and now we are... 70 years into the future. So he's done this. He's grown up. Now he's into his elderly age. Uh, Roland ended up meeting a woman. Um, she's remained unnamed. Um, but his female companion confirmed that uh, Ronald actually died shy of, uh, actually a month shy of his 86th birthday and had a stroke in his home in Merrittsville, Maryland. And then he ended up uh, having uh uh, his funeral and was cremated so according to roland's companion the man himself actually never believed that he was a victim of satanic possession and he actually shunned religion so you have this poor boy that went through all of this craziness in his childhood but to this day before he passed he claimed that he was never actually possessed he actually just stated and claimed that he was just a bad kid that he was never possessed and it was all just concocted um, but she still says that there was one thing that she could not explain shortly after Ronald passed away a Catholic priest appeared at his home to perform his last rites and she's added that she never called the priest so which is kind of freaky if you really think about it um, she stated that she had no idea that how the father knew to come she said, but he got Ron to heaven and Ron is now in heaven with God. So that's the main inspiration behind this amazingly horrific classic horror movie. But there's also another inspiration behind The Exorcist, which involves the possession of a group of nuns in 1634. So like in the 17th century. So in this case, a group of nuns claimed possession after having illicit dreams about an attractive priest named Urbane Grandier. During the exorcism, they convulsed, blasphemed, and made sexual motions towards the priests, very similar to the infamous crucifix scene in The Exorcist. If you've seen the movie, you know what scene I'm talking about. It stands out. It's graphic. It's pretty messed up. So in a desperate attempt to clear his name, Grandier tried to exercise the nuns himself, testing them by speaking in Greek. So a sign of possession being understanding or speaking languages previously unknown to the subject. So if you speak English and all of a sudden you are speaking Latin or Greek or any other language that is unknown to, your, to you, uh, they do state that it is a sign of possession. So, however, they had been coached and responded by saying they made, no, made a pact not to speak any, any Greek, which doesn't really help the father's case, right? So, despite Grandier's best efforts, he was imprisoned and tortured. Some of the nuns in question even came to his defense towards the end of the trial, but this was dismissed as the devil's work, and he was burned at the stake. So there you have it. The inspiration behind a classic favorite horror movie was inspired by some 17th century nuns and a 14-year-old little boy. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Again, it's one of my favorites. Come back again. Sunday is another scary story. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for joining.